Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is Dr. Vivian Lee's book, The Long Fix. Now, if we work in healthcare and health insurance, we have to know who Dr. Vivian Lee is. She's kind of a celebrity already. You probably already know who she is, but if you don't, we need to talk about her. So, she is the president of Health Platforms of Verily, which is the healthcare and healthcare services arm of Alphabet Google. So, she has like an army of brilliant people alongside of her. Now, she is the former CEO and Dean of the University of Utah Health. In other words, the medical school, the academic teaching facility, the health system. She was the CEO. She ran the place. Now, I first came across her from a New York Times article that highlighted how she went through the process of creating a cost accounting system at the University of Utah. She was like, hey, how much does uh, 30 minutes in the OR cost for orthopedic surgery? Everyone looked around. I have no idea. Hey, how much does 10 minutes in the ER cost? I have no idea. How much does an MRI cost? Which relates to her because she's a, a radiologist who specializes in MRI. No idea. So she's like, how in the world are we supposed to control cost if we don't even know what stuff costs us ourselves? So they went through the effort of costing. I made another A Healthcare Z video on it. I will leave a link to it in the show notes. This was such a huge deal that Michael Porter from Harvard Business School flew out to Utah to be like, Vinnie Lee, what is going on? This is unreal. After this New York Times article came out, like her phone ran off the hook. It, it was unreal. Okay, so the Department of Defense asked her to be on their advisory board for medical preparedness for the Defense Department. She got a call from Singapore. The entire country called her. Now, Singapore is known for having one of the best healthcare systems in the world. It's incredibly high quality. It's incredibly cost effective. And they called Vivian Lee for help. She's so good. Singapore called her for help. Okay, now. While she was at the, uh, before that, she was no slouch. She was the, the, at the New York University Chief Science Officer. She had done 20 years of NIH-funded research. She had published like 200 papers. I mean, I, literally, I can't fit all the stuff she has accomplished on this board, so I have to stop there. But the point is, she has a tremendous amount of credibility. You name it in healthcare, she's probably done it. Now, she actually even started a health insurance company at the University of Utah. So their crosstown rivals, Intermountain Healthcare, they've got their own health insurance company. The University of Pittsburgh got their own health insurance company. Geisinger's got their own health insurance company. So she's like, hey, we know our costs. We deliver high value care. We should start our own health insurance company. So they did. I mean, and look, and she's a huge champion for changing payment. For, uh, in healthcare, okay? So in other words, away from fee for service. I don't want to use the V word. I don't want to say value-based care because it's kind of a euphemism. Sometimes it's used in deceptive ways, but she is all for reforming the way healthcare is paid for away from fee for service. Okay, now her book, The Long Fix, I will add it to the list of like books that if you're in healthcare, you need to read this book. Okay, again, because she has so much credibility. Okay, what is in this book? comes from a woman with tremendous credibility. These are not just ethereal academic ideas. This comes from somebody with a history of success in implementing these changes. So this is not just talk, this is almost like a record of action. Okay, so what does she propose? Primary care, what is the very first story that she has in her book, The Long Fix? It's Chen Med. I'll leave a link to that video in the show notes as well that I did. I'm not the only person who lauds Ched Med out here on the internet. Vivian Lee does as well, where their full risk model for taking care of Medicare Advantage plans is hugely successful. Okay, again, fee for service is not the answer, and she highlights in this book over and over and over again how fee for service is not the answer. She specifically even highlights how doctors in the military are paid a salary. They don't pay as much as a general. Now, they don't make as much as if they were civilians, but the point is, is that the military also knows that paying people fee for service who are in the care of their brothers and sisters is the right thing to do. Okay. 
Now, the book is a Worth a read for many reasons. By the way, I listened to the audiobook. I did not read it. Okay, so I listened to the audiobook. If you want to listen to the audiobook, I suggest that as well. Okay, the story of Dr. Ernest Codman. Again, if you work in healthcare, you have to know who Dr. Ernest Codman is. Okay, so he was a, a you know, back at, he was awesome. Okay, so he's a physician from Harvard. He actually wanted to have an outcomes based hospital that was dedicated to continuous improvement, to metrics, to measurement. And he actually wanted to call his hospital the End Results Hospital. And guess what? He, the End Results Hospital actually existed. He founded and started the End Results Hospital. Guess what year it was? 1911. That's right. 110 years ago. So he didn't call it outcomes-based. He didn't call it the V word, value-based care. The point is, is that Dr. Ernest Kahneman knew this 110 years ago, and he tried to spread it to his fellow physicians and hospitals. He was one of the founding physicians of the American College of Surgeons. The ACS, like, didn't exist before he helped found it, okay? He knew this was the right idea 110 years ago, okay? And the medical profession and the healthcare profession has been pushing against Dr. Ernest Kahneman for, and he died in the 1940s. They've been pushing against him for 110 years. So all Vivian Lee's doing, rightly so, is carrying Dr. Codman's torch, as should we all. Now, Vivian Lee brings up the point that many of us have heard before, right? 30% of healthcare is waste. 18% of the U.S. economy is healthcare. So if you knocked all the waste out of it, that would get you from 18% to 12%. That is a huge contraction of a sector of the economy. Now, all this is not done at the expense of health. If anything, through innovation, better primary care, et cetera, et cetera. Like the point is, is that the end result of healthcare in America is improved health. It's not more services, it's not more tests, it's not more surgeries. The, the output is improved health. So the point is, is that you would actually improve health dramatically in America while lowering the economic contribution of healthcare to American GDP from 18% to 12%. And I think it's important for us to go through like the mental exercise of what that would mean because Vivian Lee has so much credibility that she like just might pull it off. I think there's a pretty good likelihood she'd pull it off. Okay, so this has happened before. Healthcare is not special. Healthcare is not some little snowflake, okay? It's happened before in America. It's happened before in many places. Let's take one place, farming. Let's look at what happened to the farming industry. Okay, so back in 1950, farming was 9% of the GDP. And it, over the next 60 years to 2010, shrunk from 9% of the GDP to 1% of the GDP. Did, did we all starve in the process? No, the bounty of US farms increased. That's right. So, the, so just like in healthcare, right? They decreased their percentage of the GDP while improving their output. Okay. So now, specifically, what did this do to farming jobs? Okay. What we have here on the solid line is the number of, of farming jobs in America as a percent of the total. Like, similarly, it was 10% in 1950, and it went down to 1% in 2010. So it like parallel that the drop in the GDP. What did that do? Okay. I remember growing up in the 80s, there was this movie called, like, The Farm or something about how the farming communities of America were being decimated. Like, and I'll leave a link to, like, a PBS uh, show from the 1980s about Iowa, and it decimated rural America. This whole movement decimated rural America, and all these small towns and all their economies got crushed. Keep in mind, America's farm output improved. Like, our food increased, right? So improved output. But the point is the jobs were lost. Now, the dotted line here is the absolute number of jobs. So notice that while the jobs as a percentage were decreasing, the absolute number of jobs actually went up and peaked. And how is it possible that the percentage went down but the absolute number went up? It's because there were just more and more people coming to America through immigration and through birth that more people were getting into more and more jobs uh, in excess of the increased job growth in farming, but then it just reached a point where farming uh, job growth stopped, and then jobs went into decline for farming, okay? So right now, let's apply that to healthcare, right? So if we're going to do Vivian Lee's thing of dropping it, then the number of healthcare jobs will probably continue to increase. The percentage of them as a total of all jobs will probably decrease, and this is a huge deal because 
healthcare has the highest employment of any sector of the US economy. The healthcare employs 20 million people. Keep in mind, only 1 million of them are doctors. So the vast majority of these people working in healthcare are nurses and techs and administrators and all sorts of ancillary um, types of services. So you mean to tell me that, okay, so it's not going from 10% to 1%, but it's going from 18% to 12%. That will decimate a significant number of these 20 million jobs. And I think that right there is the reason why Codman didn't get what he wanted. Because there is so, listen, and as a physician, like making money and creating jobs off of the ineffective treatment of the suffering of people is unacceptable. Like as a physician, like if I have to choose between patients and jobs, I have to choose patients. Listen, other people might choose jobs, but I choose patients. Okay, so for the sake of patients, we need to have the number of healthcare jobs go down. We, we just need to. And Vivian Lee is like essentially saying the same thing. But until we reconcile how this is going to happen, how are we going to dramatically lower employment in healthcare, then the force against that will be so strong that Vivian Lee and myself, we just, we just got our work cut out for us. And with all of you as well. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Seat.